I, I feel like that is like the agency owner's responsibility, you know, because yeah. the staff members, they could sell, they could do customer service, but they're not going to be able to spend the money for marketing or come up with these marketing ideas or like, they're not going to go to like do the research and go to YouTube and l learn all these like, you know, how to things you can't expect that from them. So I feel like, Hey, my job is to provide a lead to them. Simple as that. Yeah. you too what um what kind of like got you motivated to go to that level because there's a lot of agents out there that are farmers agents and they you know even the agency i worked at i think it was like three or four of us it was never really that that you know that big um and the volume and the size and the numbers you guys are doing um what kind of like was it just like you were going after just the size was it like a money thing that you wanted to hit or like family or like was it traveling or like what was like your thing that you know got you going and motivated you to take it to the to the levels you've taken it yeah um i think that has changed over the years you know i think that's normal too and i think it's also okay for everybody that's like a personal question. Like everybody, they have different ambition levels, right, right. you know, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with like having a smaller agency, having great, you know, uh, time off and uh, enjoying life, you know? Sure. So um, for me personally, in the beginning, in the beginning, Chris, there's, man, there's so many things that motivate me, but uh, I love this topic because um, it changes. But in the beginning, you know, things didn't work out at AAA. So in the beginning, yeah. when things didn't work out at the end, it was kind of like, I had like a chip on my shoulder. Like I'm going to prove them that they made a wrong decision, you know, of, yeah. uh, so I kind of came from like a re revenge type of motivation. Like I want to like, I have so much to prove. Like, did they like lay you off or what happened with triple A? Yeah. Oh, wow. Shoot, yeah. dude. They, yeah. They <laughs> fired, they fired me and I loved that job and I was making good money at a young age. So that was kind of like a setback that it was like, kind of like difficult for me because I saw myself being there for a long time. So I was like, kind of like, taken off guard and uh but that was a great learning experience uh especially when it comes to humility dude that's also uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to you at that yeah. point that's dude. yeah looking back at it it definitely was um that's crazy but so that's how it started and then it started you know changing where i was like hey i want to have a family i want to i need to be able to support a family um so it shifted there um i think also um just pure numbers you know that's part of the you know we got to have targets of like hey i want to make you know i think for some reason you know uh having an agency with the revenue of doing seven figures was something I, i've uh, always had you know that was like a goal i had so that kind of like i had like a long-term one too mm -hmm. um you know i have goals for like employee count you know yeah. uh i want to have a certain amount of employees i also have goals of like i want to have certain employees making you know six figures uh sure. and, and just um man i just every day it's almost different you know what motivates you yeah. you know yeah. I, I think it's okay for me to say like hey i want to have the certain car you know so right. whatever you kind of have to like search your you know have internal conversation and search like your deep, deep side of you and see like hey, hey what gets me yeah. going and whatever it is if you want to prove somebody wrong if you want to get something or if you want to take care of somebody like just kind of go deeper so you always remind yourself you know because what we do on a daily is maybe you know it's insurance you know sometimes it's not that fun or it's not that i i enjoy it but it's like it could get dry sometimes so to really be pushed through some of the uh, difficult days it is important to have to remind yourself of what, mo what motivates you sure. and i think it, it's a good exercise to understand yourself to see what gets you going because yeah. it's almost like you have to find ways to push yourself um, yeah. and have long-term ones, short-term ones. I think that is, um, it's, it's a good exercise to uh, always do to find out what really motivates you. Yeah, I 100% I agree. I think it's important, um, you know, having, first and foremost, having a goal, because right. if you don't have a goal, you know, you don't really have direction of where you're gonna go. So um, whether those are huge, whether those are not so big, um, having the direction and then asking yourself like why why is that my goal and then you're right there's nightstand where I'm like I'll sit in here 
not as late as you. You're probably a little later than I am, but sometimes I'll be here till like eight, you know, eight p.m. Um, you know, sometimes nine too. And 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 I'm like, dude, I'm tired. You know, it's not it's not always um, the most fun when you leave your office. I'm in a basement floor. We don't even have windows. Um, we're we're in the process of going to a bigger office where there is windows, but um, there's no windows. So I'll I'll be in my office the whole day and I won't see the sun. Like I'll leave and I'll go outside and it's dark. And especially more recently, now that the you know the times changed, um, where the right. sun's out later, but uh, I'll leave and it's like, dude, it's dark, and I'm like, dude, I didn't see the sun like at all. Since, uh, only when I got to the office this morning, um, and those aren't they're not necessarily fun. So you definitely, I I 100% agree. You need something to like be you know your north star. Like this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, and like this is why I'm here till 9 p.m. and like leaving, not feeling like miserable because if you hate it. Um, that's not cool because yeah there's a lot of people that reach out to me Dan and they they ask me they're like you know hey like I can I do you think I can get to that level within a couple years or two or three years and I'm like you can definitely do it um, it's gonna take a shit ton of work and you're gonna have to bust your ass the whole time and like do uncomfortable stuff that you may or may not be willing to do and I get nervous telling them like you should do it um, because I don't know if I think honestly like just based on what you said I think you're pure like you're just a pure competitor like you want to just you're like the fact that numbers are like kind of just excite you um, I f like that's just my gut I feel like you're just you just want to like win and like with numbers and like you're just a competitor and I feel like um, certain people have that and certain people maybe don't and it, it's okay either either way but um, yeah man I respect it I think I'm kind of like that too like I just want like that number just I'm just a goal oriented like number um, competitor and it's just it's a it's a great business to be in for it because the the, the sky's you know the limit so yeah, yeah no I, I think that is true because growing up I wanted to be a you know athlete and yeah. I, could, I couldn't so uh, you know when, when it comes to athletes we have stats you know what did and you play Dan I, I played basketball well, I was oh. also, you know, into like baseball. So like, you know, collecting baseball cards, looking at people's stats and stuff like that. And then seeing yeah. like, you know, if, if people, they play better and they have better stats and they get higher income. So, um, right. so I think I am a competitor in a certain way, but I think also that helps too, but also combining it with something that is not just for yourself, I think is important too. Yeah. Because the motivation of just doing it for yourself could take you to a pretty, pretty good level. But mm -hmm. now if you think about, hey, I'm doing this for my family. And then now that I have, you know, employees um, that are really, you know, taking care of their families with the income from the agency, now I have like a sense of obligation, like, hey, I better like keep my game up high because people are kind of depending on me to figure out things for them to have the opportunity. So once you start putting more responsibilities on yourself with not just, you know, your goals, but other people's goals, I think that motivation level goes up. So not doing it just for yourself, but doing it for others. I think that's another level of motivation yeah. that I've discovered more, re you know, uh, more recently as, you know, th my employees have been with me for so many more years. I feel yeah. like, you know, just obligation as, a, as an employer, you know, they, they could choose who they could work for. And now that they're choosing me, I feel like, man, I better like, you know, keep my game sharp and make sure the agency is going the right way because they put my trust in me and I have to deliver on, you know, and they're working hard. So I think when you have a sense of obligation to work hard for other people, you know, customers, employees, family, those are um, good source of um, motivation too. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Uh, it almost feels like you're like, well, I mean, yeah, the way you operate and you kind of, you're driving the ship. So if you, you know, you do a good job, they do a good job, they make six figures, you're, their kids, get to you know benefit from the you know the the rewards that you you know the you know the agency is is giving off too so it's almost like you have like a hundred kids man like if ever your employees <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, it does de depend on you know what type of opportunity is here it depends on where they grow up you know where to go to school you know it's, it's like a big big thing about a big thing to think about uh, so that makes me feel like man there's I can't be you know, sacking off or I can't be like, you know, spending, blowing money on my, you know, you know, selfish needs, you know, I have to spend yeah. money wisely and uh, think about, you know, their futures. So 
Um, if you put it that way, Chris, I'm almost like a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're like a great grandpa, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's a good way to look at things, I think. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Doing it for others, not just it's, for yourself. I think it's a healthy pressure to have because mm -hmm. it's, if your ambition is to do bigger and better things, then that accountability is good. Um, some people out there maybe don't want all that and they don't, like, that's not what they want. And having 10, you know, 10 plus employees is probably like the worst thing that they could ever do for themselves. So like going back to what I said, man, I think it, it takes a certain type of person um, that wants that and like seeks that. Um, but yeah, Dan, what, did, what would you say? And yeah, this was also something I really was interested in. What, do, what would you say is like one of the things that um, kind of helped you? Was it the leads that buying leads? Is that really kind of what got you guys to scale to the size that you guys got to? Or was it, you know, the marketing? I know you do a fantastic job on social media too. Um, how much of that was part of the play? Or like, you know, was it the leads or was it cold calling or um, training? Or what did you think that like really got, it was a combination of all of them or? Yeah, great question, Chris. And that also evolved too. So in the beginning was leads, yeah. you know, but I think in general, my willingness to spend the money on marketing, I mm. think definitely helped. Um, when it comes to marketing, I think a lot of agency owners, they look at the ROI of the short term too much, but we're in the residual game, you know? So right. thinking of things long term, and when I spend that money to buy the leads and then pay the commissions out, sometimes it doesn't look like, hey, it doesn't look like a good deal. So in the beginning, I was doing inner leads probably for the first like, you know, uh, seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has shifted more towards uh, social media now. Um, mm -hmm. And the budget has increased, you know, as my agency has grown, uh, I have to spend more to keep growing you know, because mm -hmm. attrition, you're going to lose some policies. So I have to keep writing more policies every year to grow. Uh, and that's kind of like a must for me to keep growing the agency. And, um, but yeah, spend, spend spending money on marketing. I think that is a yeah. challenge for a lot of agency owners um, because of, but that's something that, you know, like you said, is scalable because sure. whether it's leads or social media, if you have something that works, you are able to say, okay, well, let me just double the spend so I could get double the leads. You know, a lot of different yeah. marketing tactics, you can't do that because they, they require time or personal connections. And there's just so many, so much you could do. You could only be at one networking event at a time. And due to COVID too, I think uh, the world's going more towards that direction. It already was, but people just, you know, I think, do you, do you mostly do personal lines, Chris, or? You know, we originally were focused more on personal lines. Um, running some reports recently, we're now more heavily on the commercial side because of some some of the bigger accounts that have come in have been commercial lines. So it's it's skewed us. Now we're like sixty five percent commercial lines. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. which is fine. I mean, <laughs> I like That's working exciting. with the business owners too, so it's yeah. it's cool for me. Um, but yeah, so it's also, I don't think as scalable with like leads for per se, but um, yeah, yeah. So would you say like, Dan, you, you would narrow it down to like leads. Was that the thing that kind of got you going to take off or um, is that what you, you would say the most or? In the beginning, yeah. But now it's, today I would say it's more social media. Okay. So yeah, I guess what I wanted to know too, when you, so since that is, you know, the leads, that's kind of what got you rolling and it's scalable, I know it takes a certain amount of analysis and understanding of numbers and you know ROI and whatnot to scale. You can't just be like, oh, you know, one out of 10 is closing like off the top of your head. You should have some data. Did you, how did you do that yourself? Like, were you seeing like, okay, for every dollar I'm spending and we're making two, how did you get that like analysis? Were you actually in the trenches like running that data or how did you do it? I wish I had a fancy answer for that, but you know, it, I think it was more just intuition. Really? Yeah, wow. it was. It wasn't that data driven. I was just like, it was almost like blindly spending money on it, yeah, um, and just trusting that my customer service is good enough where certain people will, will renew. Uh, I yeah, think, that, yeah. I think I'm almost glad I did that because I think if I ran the numbers a little bit, I think that would have made me a little less aggressive, because when you sell a policy you never know 
you know, if they're going to refer you somebody, you know, if they're going right. to, you know, buy a home later or, you know, exactly. you could always, you could always count on premium increasing, right? You're right. No, you're right. You're right. I think you're, I think you're a hundred percent right. Cause yeah, if you don't, if you see the numbers too much, it can actually mess you up for sure. So yeah. I agree. That's well, probably the right thing. People think I'm really analytical and data driven and I should be more. And I think it helps, but, um, it was just, it, it was really just knowing that, Hey, like, you know, it's, it's for the long term, And even if it was costing me money, I'm still okay with, you know, making more money. It'd be great right. if I made, you know, made the money back in year two and profitable three, year three. I still don't even know. But now that I've done yeah. it for 13 years, I just don't even have to think about it or worry about it. You know, yeah. I just, it's almost like, you know, when you buy a book of business, you have to put money in and then you get the renewals later, right? So it's like almost like yeah. buying a policy by buying the lead and then paying the commission. Um, yeah. So I think that's an important uh, yeah, yeah. way to look at things as business owners because, sure. you know, making that switch from like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm selling insurance. I'm a sales agent to a, you know, an agency owner. I think that's yeah. really the switch is when you become, you're making investment decisions rather than like, you know, sales decisions. Like instead of looking for the next hire and look, uh, next, next sale, you're looking for the next hire and things like that. So um, I would say, and then, you know, I will still audit some of these companies, like this company is doing better than this company. So I'll run some numbers. So it's not completely just like, you know, so data is important, but I do yeah. feel like um, when it comes to leads, um, I could tell you guys from experience, like if you have a good enough closing ratio, if you have good enough retention, that the only question is like, when would you start making your money back? How fast is it? But if right. you're patient enough, eventually you will, if you have, a, you know, a bigger book. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I'm really glad you said that because I think I talk about data a lot and I talk about how like important it is to for decision making and stuff. And I, um, I've i also done a lot of stuff just based on intuition and just, just gut feelings and um, hiring, like forecasting and just like, I, I look at the numbers, but I'm just like also like, dude, you never know what could happen. You know, like yeah. we could do better than that. You know, it's so um, you gotta go with your gut. I think, especially when you're running an agency, you can't just always be, you know, blind, blind to the, to the data. But Dan, I wanted to ask you for the social media aspect, like how do you guys do that? Is it just, um, are you guys really just running like ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, or like, are you just putting out organic content? Um, Cause I personally, I don't really run. I tried running some Facebook ads. I had a guy who was doing it for me. We were burning up dollars like crazy. So I was like, oh, maybe we should pull this back a little bit. Um, but I know you guys, I, I even get some of your ads sometimes on like Instagram oh, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and I don't click them because I don't want to waste your money, man. So I don't click them. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. It's not off uh, clicks. It's off impression. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm taking your money. <laughs> I'm wasting uh, your money. Man. Yeah. No, it's basically um that, you know, you want to know who your target market is. Yeah. Right. Um, the great thing about social media and these companies is that they know everything about everybody. You know, so yeah. if you wanted to target, you know, a certain easy, demographic, easy. Cer certain language, you know, so business owners, people who live in certain radius of you, you yeah. can just tell them like, hey, these are the type of people I want to show my content to. Mm -hmm. So you could be really narrow and, and niche, which I love about it. And then you just um, make content that is for that audience, mm -hmm. you know, that speaks to the audience. So it's like, you know, so if, if you're contextual to the, con yeah, to the audience, exactly. So um i just uh you know make content a lot of different content and the organic one uh, i do both you know yeah um but that leads to like you know landing pages forms you know uh, mm. uh they, they can call directly too so it's just been a great way for us to be able to target who we want to talk to and i think yeah. just where the attention is you know everybody's on their phones all the time right. and um it's just great to be in front of the right type of people that you want to be in front of. Uh, mm -hmm. So I really re uh, recommend it, Chris, especially if you're like a business, you know, um, the target business owners, you know, yeah. 50 miles radius. Um, like if I, like, that. like if yeah. I wanted to do like plumbers or something, or like I want to do contractors or, or something along those lines, I've tested it a little bit. I haven't gone that narrow where I'm like, okay, I'm only going to hit up 
plumbers or something like that. And I'm going to make a little video like, hey, like, are you a plumber? Like, do you, you have, do you come up with the ideas, Dan? Or who's like the ones that are like the masterminds behind the content? I do. Uh, that's kind of like, I consider that one of my most important job, you know, because right. it's, it's marketing. So like we talked about before, like one of my responsibilities is to make sure my employees have the opportunity. So to yeah. be able to do that, I have to, you know, spend the money, but not also come up with these advertising campaigns. And uh, I spend a lot of my time doing that, um, especially when it's like on a su- Sunday morning when it's really quiet and you don't have employees or like, you know, people like mm-hmm. trying to, yeah, ask you questions or things come up. The kids aren't even woke. Uh, they haven't even woke up yet when it's really like, you know, quiet. That's really when I go into like, hey, how can I, what, what type of copy, what should I say? You know, mm-hmm. who, who should say this? So I go into that type of like um, content creation mode. And I plan things out. I have a, a videographer uh, that we I work with. Uh, takes great photos too. Um, but those are the type of things that um, I, I, I feel like that is like the agency owner's responsibility, you know, because yeah. the staff members they could sell, they could do customer service, but they're not going to be able to spend the money for marketing or come up with these marketing ideas or like they're not going to go to like do the research and go to YouTube and l- learn all these like, you know, how to things you can't expect that from them so i feel like hey my job is to provide a leads to them simple as that you know so i'm always thinking of ways to how can i efficiently use my marketing dollars um, i optimize it and to do that i think content is really the variable yeah no that's a good point i think uh that's great information for me too just because that's like a little more more selfish for me because i i should really kind of keep that rolling 